Hello, everybody. This is Charles Cook at uh, Cook Baxter Immigration here on behalf of the Gomez Acker lawsuit. Uh, the judge just issued his decision uh, minutes ago. I've already live tweeted about this. It's uh, a 26 page decision uh, from the judge. It is a um, uh, it's a good decision. Um, it, we didn't win anything, uh, everything. We did win wins, uh, which is he uh, he extended the lottery. And he reserved numbers. He also served the key classes, which are the visa issuance classes. So, um, and you know, so it, this is great news. So, so plaintiff is protected in the Gomez Acker Muhammad Fong Jong case. This is no application to the Kennedy lawsuit. All right, except that judge also extended to non-plaintiffs as part of the class the ability to get their visas over the next period of time until the Department of State issues uh, their new portal of visas. So this is this is great news. Uh, and uh, we are, I mean, hey, this is more than we had before. So uh, we don't know exactly how many DVs they issued in September. Uh, my best guess is they probably issued 3,500 or so. Keep in mind, there was less than a thousand plaintiffs, so that means a goodly number of plaintiff, of non-plaintiffs, already got their visas, uh, or they got their adjudication. And also, about thirty percent of people were denied. Now, a lot of people were denied for their medicals, which is great news for them because this allows you to still get your DVs, uh, even though you're winning on your medicals. That's why we told you to go to the consulates, get the visas. This is good. So first question is this. Let's take a look at, at this decision here. Um, and uh, the judge points out that the, that the Department of State issued around 3,000 visas. Uh, and they should have issued around, you know, they had 40,000 to issue. Uh, the judge takes verbatim some of the things that I said and, and others said in the, uh, in the hearing and literally took our numbers. So here's what they said. The Department of State, Judge Mayda said, adjudicated 5,903 visa applications as of a week ago. So if they were doing about 1,500 a week, they're probably over 6,000 adjudications. They'd issued 3,208 diversity visas and refused 1,885. I would guess that a good 80% of those 1,885 are probably going to get their visas because many of them were actually plaintiffs. Um, so that puts them at five. So the judge said, okay, so they've issued that number, uh, which is great, but they didn't really try that hard. The judge even points out um, that uh, the Department of State waited five, well, we even said they waited five days to give to give advice to the consulates. Uh, so they really weren't uh, in the in, in the decision. The court reiterated, it said this, the quote, the court reiterated its earlier ruling that if it requires full compliance, it would be within its inherent power to to enforce prior orders to do so. So he goes through a long discussion of the which which we and the, and the Gomez and Fang Zhang and uh, uh, Muhammad plaintiffs gave to him, and he agreed that we were right on this. This is now keep in mind, everybody. This is the first time in history that these visas have ever been reserved beyond September. There, this is literally historical in its context. Um, and it has application outside of the DV context. I mean, that doesn't interest you, but this is actually a really powerful decision. Um, and he just basically blows off the defendant's arguments. Um, he says this, plaintiffs assert that supplemental relief is needed because defendants spend six months violating what they were required to do under the INA and the relief granted to date has not been sufficient to that to, to remedy that harm. The court agrees. Bam, that actually was something I said in oral argument. I'm, you know, he actually cites the transcript. That's actually pretty cool. I think that's awesome. At least I think it's like what I said. Who knows? Could be what somebody else said. For these reasons, the court finds that additional relief is necessary to meet the exigencies of the case. He goes through the numbers. Um, so 58,000 out of 55,000 on average, they issued 47,000. So they're, you know, 32,000 below their average. 
Um, and you all know we asked for 30,000 to get up to the average. We thought that was a, a solid number. We, we also knew the judge wasn't going to give us that many. Um, uh, and the judge also looked at, look, in the 20 days since the order, they issued at a rate of 160 a day. In last year, they issued at a rate of 173 a day. Um, and uh, what the judge says here, looking at that, they could have issued more diversity visas in the weeks and months before the court issued its orders. So they could have done their job. Um, so look, it just says, look, they're going to need more. They, you, you need to do better. You waited five days. You you imposed arbitrary and unlawful requirements like the quarantine requirement. Thank you so much for those that sent declarations. That was powerful, awesome, wonderful. Uh, he goes on to quote several of these declarations. Um, he actually uh, talks about Nadia Dahab's declaration where she said, if you're not a plaintiff, you lost your chance. We will not process your cases. From the audio recording that uh, Raphael put up, powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. Um, and, and really just exceptional. Uh, the Gomez lawyers, uh, 1,794 non-name plaintiff spreadsheet, extraordinarily powerful for the judge shows you how personal stories make a difference. Um, and the court said, look, I'm going to grant this relief. I'm going to extend this. So <laughs> here's the key. Uh, plaintiffs asked the court to reserve 30,000. Plaintiffs presumably arrived at that number by subtracting the number of diversity visas issued and how many they should have issued within that year. Because frankly, we don't think COVID was a valid reason uh, for more than a couple of months to do this job. But the court says, look, this is not an average year. This is something he has said throughout this. And, you know, COVID, COVID, COVID. Because keep in mind, you don't know this, but the court's been closed. The court is still effectively closed in Washington, D.C. All his staff are working remotely. Um, so, you know, he understands from the government's perspective the closure. Um, and so he gets it. He says, look, uh, the impact on visa processing is substantial. And this is why I think he asked, why he asked for the IR numbers. Now, immediate relative numbers were not suspended by Trump, but they have slow walked these numbers. So I, I, don't, I don't think his use of them was appropriate in the context because they have slow walked all immediate relatives. Just ask our K-1 plaintiffs. Uh, they slow walked these, but he basically said, look, Visa issuance is down for IRs by 35% and IR ones, IR twos by 41% for the fiscal year. Uh, and so he just does a comparison between these two categories, looked at a 50% drop off in numbers. And he says this, I'm an equitable court. I can't put plaintiffs in a better position than they would have been, but for the State Department's legal mistakes. At the, at the best he can do is put them in a similar position, but for the errors. Um, and so for this reason, the court looked at what was done and that visa issuance between March 31 and September 30 fell by 75% for immediate relatives, spouses of U.S. citizens. So basically, he just took these numbers and it did the math and he came up with 9,095 more diversity numbers. So a third of what we requested, um, which means there's it's probably only about 8,000 of those because 1,800 had already, maybe even 7,000 because 18, 1,800 had already been interviewed and they were refused, but likely temporary refusals for medicals. They probably did another 1,000 interviews, or maybe they didn't uh, since September 24th. Um, and so maybe sometime between seven and 8,000 people uh, who are getting their visas. All right. Right. Put in here the order. He didn't say treat them by numeric order, by your selection criteria. He's leaving that up to the Department of State. But basically, that means over the course of the year, they will have issued 50% of the numbers. You know, they're going to leave 20, 25,000 numbers on the table. You know, I don't, I don't, I think that sucks, but it's better than leaving, you know, 40,000 on the table. Um, uh, you know, of course we could appeal this. We'll talk, we don't have lawyers haven't talked about this yet, but you know, first we celebrate that people are going to get their, a lot of people are going to get their visas. Um, uh, and, uh, that's where that is. And 
The next part of the case, he talked about visa reissuance. These are people that should that were denied that should have got their visas reissued. And and basically he said, look, that's in effect until you run out of visas. So you can keep getting visas reissued for the fiscal year. And he technically, I guess, extended the fiscal year until they finished issuing all the visas. So you could still have time to get your visa reissued. That's that's my that's Chuck's take. On this, we'll we'll put out a more detailed thing uh, tomorrow about this um, on the class action. So there was two, there was three different class action requests. One was ours, but ours was very limited. Ours was to the people that needed visa reissuance. He did not grant that one because every one of our plaintiffs got their visa reissuance, and a lot of other people did too. Although we are aware that they put down that you were barred under 1014. That's wrong. We're addressing that. So if you were barred in your, if, if it says on your visa subject to 10, uh, you know, 10, 114, please email me a picture of your visa. Email it to me at ccook at immigration.net. You guys have all my, you have my email um, here. So just email me if you got a visa reissued uh, that is, um, su that says subject maybe or is subject to uh, 1014, all right, because that's wrong. That's, if you had your visa on, on 423, that's legally wrong. So email to me. I'm working with the government's lawyer to get that fixed. Um, so we'll work on that next. Um, he did grant the Gomez class certification, uh, which is this. Individuals selected in the lottery who had not received their interview visa before April 23rd. All right, that's everybody. All right, who didn't get their visas issued? Uh, so um, that's great news. So this is for everybody. What about non-plaintiffs? What about non-plaintiffs? I kept telling you, relax. We're fighting for non-plaintiffs too in, in in the Gomez Acker case. And so we got you visas. All right. Now anybody's on a Kennedy plaintiff, that includes you. Okay, you're a non-plaintiff in our lawsuit. I don't know what the judge is going to do in your lawsuit. You need to talk to Curtis and Raphael about that. Um, but you are a non-plaintiff as far as we're concerned. So you would be adjudicated. Now, if you are a relatively low number, uh, then I'm going to repeat the advice that I gave you previously. Become the squeaky wheel. You know, that a lot of people got their visas that were had high numbers because they were the squeaky wheel whether that's at the KCC or at the consulates, especially if it's at the consulates. Uh, so this is great news. I mean, we are, I mean, we're, we're super excited to get the class certification, super excited to get reservation of numbers beyond the fiscal year, uh, super excited to have State Department have an order to do future processing of the visas pending final adjudication of this case. That means they have to keep processing it and the judge makes a final decision, which could be quite a ways down the road. Could be quite a ways, quite a ways down the road. He's not going to grant a stay to the government, and I'm not even sure they're going to ask. They might just adjudicate it. Now, for the DV 2021 people, before you ask me a single flippant question, tomorrow is DV 2021, and we know there are no there are no appointments scheduled. Um, we don't know why. We don't know if they're going to do the same thing they did in 2020, but we're going to give them a month. We're going to give them till, till November. And then if they haven't processed anybody, let's talk about getting some plaintiffs and suing them on DV 2021. So in the meantime, if you are DV 2021, keep doing the KCC, get your paperwork in, keep working on it, finish your paperwork, call the consulates. Don't email Chuck. Okay. Don't put it on Twitter on unrelated comments about Trump that I put up. All right. I do want to answer some of your questions here because uh, you got some great questions. Uh, there are some comments. There's a lot of comments here. Thank you, everybody, for two. And I know for some of you, it's like two o'clock in the morning. Uh, Hildy, in Espanol, es muy sencillo. Extendieron las visas por más de nueve mil hasta que lo corren. Entonces, si eres en Cuba, todavía tienes tiempo para llegar al consulado. Okay? Todavía puedes hacerlo. Entonces, tienes tiempo can you give us an answer per category? All right. Had a visa expired. You can still, the class wasn't certified, but the judge said, no, as long as it's open and he mandated it to be open 
until he makes the final decision, you can get it redone. So get it redone. All right. Had an inset, no medical. Well, then you should be calling the consulate to get your medical. Um, the interview canceled. You should be calling the consulate to get your interview. So that's all of what you should be doing here to make this happen. Uh, how many days? Unlimited days. I mean, it's it's probably till November, December. I mean, they're not going to issue 9,000 visas in a month. Um, they're going to slow walk this. The more they slow walk it, the more the court will extend it. Um, 9,095 immigrant visas. The visas, not cases. Okay, visas. That means derivatives are counted. That's not going to, you know, that that means a lot fewer people. That's but that's always the case. That's no different. Marina, I, 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 I fought for 30. I mean, we did what we had to do to get the maximum number we thought we could, we could justify. Um, but you know what? That's the lottery. I mean, the lottery sucks in that regard. Um, thank you, Parviz. It was a pleasure arguing for you. Uh, interview in May. Well, many, many. Yes, you, you need to be calling the consulate. How many times? Cuantas veces has llamado? ¿Cuántas veces has llamado? ¿Cien, doscientos, trescientos? ¿Y, y, ¿Y no? ¿Por qué? Es lo que yo haría. Grant, what about the winners that are not plaintiffs? Grant, have you not been listening to this? Everybody is included in this. Everybody is included in it. Plaintiffs are protected. Gracias, Javier, por sus comentario. Um, Berkey, yes, name. No, it applies to everybody. It applies to everybody. And by the way, Virtually all the named plaintiffs have been interviewed. As far as I know, everybody's been interviewed. We're doing a final tally on our 169 plaintiffs, but as far as I know, everybody's been interviewed. So really, it's all for non-plaintiffs at this point. Um, one thing left, remove Trump's ban. Yes, well, Javier, that's that's next. Rosario, my wife agrees with you. Um, awesome news. Thank you. Uh, DV2021, I already talked about it. Melissa, since I did the case for free, I agree I need a raise. Thank you very much. Azerbaijani problem, 14 days. There you go. Problem solved. Problem solved. Get to Georgia. Get your interview reset. There you go. Great news. Uh, thanks for everything tomorrow morning. Yes, go back and ask the KCC. Start calling tomorrow morning. Cuba travel ban still a problem, Mary. You need to get out of Cuba. Mary, tienes que salir de Cuba. All right. Damien. I love Damien. Damien, you're not even in a lottery. You have your green card. Uh, I love that you're so bored you listen to me. That's awesome. Uh, Mahmoud, would you pay attention, Mahmoud, to what I already said? Uh, who will get the visa and who will not? That's up to you, not up to me. That means early bird gets the worm. Start calling. Uh, you know, um, this is a good question, I mean, I would imagine that now that the Department of State is not under a massive rush to get everything done within three weeks, that they'll go back to a number system. I think, honestly, I think that's fair. Um, but I would still call and call and call and call. Uh, good morning, Kenya. What steps? All right, here you heard me. If your case is at the NBC, call the NBC. If your case is at the embassy for an appointment, call the embassy for an appointment. You're missing a medical, call the consulate to get a medical exam. That's what you need to do. Um, um, <laughs> thank you, F.A., I appreciate it. Uh, what are the chances of 11? I don't, except for that, I don't know where they are in the numbers because numbers go by region. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Um, let me, uh, yeah, Berk, I, I just don't know the numbers. Uh, I don't have it memorized and I don't know where they are. Uh, extension of medical, you should be fine. You should be fine. Then stay outside of the Schengen for 14 days. Now, the Schengen ban doesn't exist. I mean, they, in this case, the Schengen ban doesn't exist. Um, and if you don't have, and if you are a reissue, then you need, you do, need, for that purpose to come in the country, you need to go somewhere else for 14 days. All right. All right. But if the Schengen ban will expire in January too, and after Trump's nightmarish performance last night as a runaway clown car, you know, you got to be hopeful. All right. You got to be hopeful. Uh, Geardy, uh, I don't know what that, uh, oh, Kennedy plaintiffs, that's, I would talk to Curtis if I were you. Um, uh, let's see, embassy still closed. You need, if you're in an embassy that's still closed, you need to be asking to transfer your case. Call the KCC, call the consulate, transfer your case, some other consulates that's open. 
Uh, uh, Raimonda, uh, Ramonda, there isn't a date in which they have to be issued by. They just have to do it until they get done. All right. And I do think it will be, um, I don't know, <laughs> uh, 9,000 visas. Okay, Muhammad, I, America, life's not fair. Life sucks. I, I agree it's not fair. Uh, but we, we, uh, we're not going to win that issue on appeal. We're not. The judge appeal, I think he appeal proofed that. He had a that he had a rational basis for the decision he made. I I don't agree with the rational basis, but it is. Some not applies to non plaintiffs. I don't know how many out of Europe. Uh, I don't know whether they're gonna do stuff numerically. Um, um, you tell them that you won the case. They have nine thousand visas to issue, and you want to be your you want yours to be issued there. Um, don't know about individual numbers. Curtis talks about constant review. You'll stop for now. We're zooming in six on the merits. I don't know what Curtis is talking about. They're not going to stop doing consular interviews. They're under an order to issue these visas. Um, so I, I, if he says that they don't have to issue visas until the judge issues an order, I think that's legally wrong. That's certainly not how I read uh, this decision. Let's take a look at that here. Uh, reserve numbers for future processing of the name plaintiffs pending final adjudication is matter. Well, that's an interesting question. If you read that, you know, does that mean that they, they stop adjudicating? I, I, I don't know. My position is they don't stop adjudicating. Now, if the judge, judge will have to clarify that. If he, if he says tomorrow morning, hey, you don't, they don't have to process it unless I finally win, unless you finally win. Now, he did make a comment in oral argument that um, was, well, you know, I might rule against you at the end. Now, I don't think he's going to, but he could. And then what happens to people at that point if they've already been issued these? My response was, Judge, nobody's harmed by that because they can't come in the country anyway. Uh, and if they're issued and you rule against us and revoke all those visas, visas are revoked. Um, so uh, could it be that Curtis is right about future processing of the cases? Could be. Uh, doesn't mean I wouldn't be calling the consulate. Uh, we'll issue a more of a, a deeper update tomorrow about that uh, because I think that's a little unclear at this point. Great, great point, by the way. Thank you for bringing that to my attention, Burke. Um, so that's it for tonight. Those are our comments. And uh, congratulations to those that non-plaintiffs who are going to benefit by this ultimately. I think we will ultimately be successful. And sorry if I keep cutting in and out. I have terrible internet at my house, and we have Comcast, and they've got problems. Internet in America sucks. Um, so until uh, tomorrow, uh, we'll get more details. We'll put it out on FAQ online. But congratulations. This is a win. Uh, this is good stuff. It shows you that you should fight. You should never give up. You should fight, and you should, you should use every tool in the toolbox including litigation. Thank you, Ross. It's been an honor so far. We're going to keep fighting for you. Have a wonderful evening.